they didn't want concessions, they wanted power. They wanted power over the prison regime to do what the hell they liked in prison. I think Tonga Stryker died. Everybody started to question what was the point of another death. And, you know, it became crystal clear to everybody that Maggie thought she was going to let as many men die as possible. And we didn't want this here. Other lives were on the line. We didn't, we didn't see any way out of it. We didn't see any way that, that it could end, uh, apart from the, the British actually giving in to the, the five demands. And we didn't consider that at all. But plans to break the deadlock were already beginning to take shape. Not in Dublin, London, or the Mays Prison, but in a small hotel in Tomb Bridge, 30 miles northwest of Belfast. I was at a meeting where a number of women discussed taking over the pulpits in churches. Balfour was also at the meeting. I personally believe that that was the point at which the church began to say, just as the British had said in the mid-70s, we can't ride this tiger. It is eating into us. We have got to stamp it out. And it was that point where the church changed its ambiguity on the prisoners to concentrating on getting the prisoners off the strike. And you, once you interfere with negotiations, you'd be re totally rejected by Sinn Féin. They want to do all the negotiating themselves. So once I called that meeting of mothers, I knew I was finished in regard to the affections of Sinn Féin. Far of all, was in very close association with the families. Uh, he was, of course, concerned about the preservation of human life, both inside and outside the prisons. He began to understand the, the suffering of the less than willing hunger strikers and of their families. And I think he did a remarkable job. Father Fall had discovered that when their sons were close to death and became unconscious, the families had the legal right to intervene and save their lives. And he called the meeting in Toon Bridge to encourage them to do just that. The main purpose of that meeting was to break the families, to get some of the families of the men on hunger strike to undertake that at the moment at which the men became declared by somebody in the prison authority is unfit to make a decision, that the family would make the decision and take them off the hunger strike. That was a very painful meeting because none of the families wanted to take that decision. But one woman at the meeting was prepared to intervene on behalf of her son, the mother of IRA man Paddy Quinn. I had my mind made up a sort of thing then. He says, I want him off. The hunger strike. And Eugene says, are you, are, you, are you sure about this? He says, should you not see the rest of the family? John or Lawrence or somebody says, I says, no. There's no time for that. On the 31st of July, Paddy Quinn became the first prisoner to come off the hunger strike. Others soon followed as their families intervened to save their lives. Now the end was in sight. The situation was quickly becoming untenable in, uh, in the sense that the majority of guys who were in the hospital on hunger strike had been told by their families that regardless of what their wishes were, regardless of their loyalty to their comrades, regardless of um, how the actual prisoner felt about it, that once they reached the critical stage, they were going to intervene. We signed up to something. The prisoners signed up to something. Our families never signed on for anything. Following the intervention of the prisoners' families, by August, the protest was drawing to a bitter end. But before it could finally do so, four more hunger strikers, Kevin Lynch, 
Kieran Doherty, Thomas McElwee, and Michael Devine were to die on hunger strike inside the Mays prison. Republican prisoners on hunger strike in the Mays prison near Belfast have announced that they're ending their protest. A statement sent out of the... Now, let me make it absolutely clear, as I say a word about the hunger strike, no concessions have been made to the IRA, and there will be certainly no perpetration uh, of uh, anything which uh, looks like concessions uh, to those who commit violence. Within two years of the hunger strike, the British government met most of the prisoners' demands. But as a result of their protest, these ten men, photographed by prison officers on the day they started to refuse food, died without the political status they sought. For some Republicans, the death toll was unnecessarily high. And 25 years on, debate continues to rage over precisely what happened on the first weekend of July 1981. The weekend when the offer of a deal was made by the British government. When Danny Morrison travelled to the Mays prison to speak to Big McFarlane. And Joe McDonnell was about to become the fifth hunger striker to die.